वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन प्रिपरेटरी वेबिनार फॉर नेशनल सर्टिफिकेशन एग्जामिनेशन फॉर एनर्जी मैनेजर्स एंड एनर्जी ऑडिटर्स बीइंग कंडक्टेड बाय नेशनल प्रोडक्टिविटी काउंसिल माइसर भावेश पटेल फ्रॉम विथलम कंसल्टेंट टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट बेजिक्स ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट पार्ट टू it's related to gas laws now it is important to remember various gas laws which are applied frequently during the combustion calculations especially for paper number 2 thermal utilities and paper number 4 too we need to understand the relations between gas volume its mass its temperature pressure and number of molecules in any calculations involving the gas laws absolute pressure and absolute temperatures are required to be considered because gauge pressures are with reference to atmosphere and degree celsius or degree fahrenheit are the scales it's on some assumptions as we have discussed in the previous tutorials let us first take a look at the volume and the temperature relations when the pressure is constant as we have said ke temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy kinetic energy of the particles in any substance and at minus 273 degrees celsius that is zero kelvin or you can say absolute zero there is no kinetic energy so all the particles cluster together the first at constant temperature it's a boils law that's it states that the product of absolute pressure and the volume of a given mass of any gas that remains constant provided the temperature of the gas remains constant so basically it's a isothermal process now practically if you want to achieve then it must be slow enough for heat to flow out and into the air as it is compressed as well as whenever there is a expansion here you can see that in the figure the there is a curve pressure is one bar on y axis and x axis the volume that is 16 so the product of this two one bar into 16 meter cube that is 16 that remain constant so if i decrease the volume let's say half from 16 bar to 8 bar then the pressure will be double so two bar so 8 into 2 once again remain 16 further decrease in the volume further half pressure will be double so 4 into 4 further if i reduce the volume Two, then the pressure will be double, so it's eight. So ultimately, the product of pressure into volume remains constant, provided the temperature remains constant. That's the isothermal process. It, that's as per the Boyle's law. Same way, there's a constant pressure, Charles' law. It states for a given mass of gas at a constant pressure, the volume is proportional to the absolute temperature. by assuming there is no frictions a volume will change to maintain constant pressure on the x axis there is a volume and y axis there is a temperature obviously this temperature is supposed to be in kelvin so v is directly proportional to t it means v1 upon t1 is equal to v2 upon t2 here you can see the volume is 1 and temperature is 293 kelvin if you heat if you increase the temperature from earlier to 366.25 then volume will also proportionally increase if you cool temperature will reduce volume will also reduce so v1 upon t1 remains constant the ratio of these two remain constant same way for constant volume uh 
uh, from Boyle's and uh, Charles' law, we can also see that if the volume of a given mass of air or any gas kept constant, the pressure will be proportional to the absolute temperature or in other words, P1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2, that remains constant. You can see here on the x-axis there is a pressure, y-axis there is a temperature. So, ratio of 10 bar by 293 Kelvin, that remains constant. If you heat, as the temperature increase, pressure will also increase provided the volume is fixed. As, the, as you cool, if you reduce the temperature of the gas inside the cylinder or inside the vessel, keeping the volume constant, the pressure will also reduce. So for any given mass of gas, where the mass of the gas is fixed, there are three variable properties, pressure, volume and temperatures. By assuming one of the three variables to be held at a constant value, we have seen the relationship between two others at constant temperature product of pressure into volume remain constant. At constant pressures, ratio of volume upon temperature obviously absolute will remain constant. At constant volume, pressure upon temperature both in absolute that remains constant. So there is a general gas law which is combination of Boyle's, Boyle's law and Charles law which states that for certain mass of any gas, the relations between pressure, volume and temperature is P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2 is equal to constant. These relations can be used in giving pressure and temperature corrections to the gas volume or we can say density. Let's understand with one example. Let's say there is a certain gas that occupies 3 meter cube at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. The pressure of the gas is 7 bar. As the gas expands in such a manner that the volume will become 9 meter cube and the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius find out the pressure of the gas. So now you can see here there are uh, two conditions, there are two situations, one is at 7 bar, second is a pressure which we have to find out. At 7 bar the volume is 3 meter cube as well as temperature is 150 degrees Celsius and after expansions the volume becomes 9 meter cube and temperature drops to 10 degrees Celsius, we have to find out what is the pressure. So 7 bar, now here this 7 bar can be absolute also, can be gauge, there is no clear cut demarcations and we know the general gas flow P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2, the pressure is supposed to be in absolute. So if you remember in my earlier tutorial of important points to the exams, I have told that whenever you are assuming something you should write down. So here let us assume the given pressure is absolute rather than gauge otherwise we have to convert. So to make it more favorable to us we are assuming that the given pressure is absolute and then apply the conditions P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2. First pressure is 7 bar, P1 is 7 bar, V1 is 3 meter cube, temperature T1 is 150 degree Celsius but don't forget to convert to Kelvin. So T1 will be 150 plus 273. P2, that's what we have to find out. V2, 9 meter cube and T2, 10 degree Celsius, that is 288 Kelvin. And then you can find out, solving the equations, you can find out P2 is equal to 1.56 bar. Then many times you will see for uh, uh, calorific value of the gaseous fuel or maybe volumetric flow rate of the gaseous fuel either nm cube or sm cube. Now let's understand this too, there are some relations too. See nm cube is the volume at NTP condition and NTP condition is normal temperature pressures having pressure 1 atmosphere 
So obviously it is 101.3 kilopascal, temperature 0 degree Celsius, that is 273 Kelvin and at that enthalpy conditions, the volume is known as a anm cube. At the same time, SM cube is a volume at STP conditions, which is standard temperature pressures. The pressures remain same, one atmosphere 101.3 kilopascal, but the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, that is 288 Kelvin. And at STP conditions, volume is denoted as SM cube. So if I apply the general gas law P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2, and put the two conditions, one is NTP and one is STP, we as the pressure remains constant, we can say V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2. V1 is let's say NM cube divided by T1. NM cube at NTP conditions T1 is 273 is equal to V2, which is SM cube divided by T2, that is 288 Kelvin. So 1 NM cube is equal to 273 divided by 288 SM cube, that is 0.948. So in paper number four, many times the flow rate will be given in SM cube per hour and calorie of the value might be given in so and so kilocalorie per NM cube. So this is how the relations is. And if you forget the relations between NM cube and SM cube, you can derive from this P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2. One condition is NTP, second condition is STP. How pressure is same. So V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2. Now let's take a look at the volume, temperature and pressures with reference to mass. Earlier the mass was constant. So there is a gas equation, characteristic gas equations which states that or expressed as PV is equal to MRST where P is pressure in kilopascal, that is kilo Newton per meter square. V is a volume in meter cube, M is a mass in kg. RS is a specific gas constant in kilo joule per kg Kelvin, which varies from gas to gas, while T is a temperature in Kelvin. Now, if RS, if you see the unit of RS, kilo joule, joule is nothing but Newton meter. So in that case, pressure will be always in kilopascal. Because Pascal is Newton per meter square. So whenever there is a joule will be there, which is Newton meter, same way suppose there is a kilowatt. As I said, watt is joule per second, joule is Newton meter, so the pressure will be always in Pascal. Remember this, this is a fundamental. But the earlier equations have a RS, which is a specific gas constant, varies from gas to gas. So there is an ideal gas equation which states that PV is equal to NRUT, where P is a pressure, kilopascal, V is a volume in meter cube. N is the number of kilomoles of the gas, while Ru is the universal gas constant, which is equivalent to 8.3143 kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Earlier, the specific gas constant was kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Here, it's a universal gas constant, so kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. So there are no new terms is coming as a kilomole or mole. So let's understand that first, what is mole and kilomole is. It is a measure of amount of substance. One mole signifies some quantity and that's the Avogadro number. That is 6.023 into 10 to 23 molecules. If you can remember this figure, it's okay. If you don't remember, just forget it, no issue. Same way, one kilomole is 1000 moles, is equivalent to 6.023 into 10 to 26 molecules. In a simple layman's language, please understand, mole and kilomole is some numbers, it's Avogadro's numbers. For example, one dozen is equal to 12 numbers. 
Now, why 12? There is no logic. Somebody has defined 12, okay, it's a 12. But there is no logic. Same way here, in a simple way, or layman's language, you understand one mole or one kilomole is some number. But there is a logic. The logic is it relates the mass with number of molecules. If I take one mole of any gas, one mole means 6.023 into 10 to 23 molecules of particular gas, and if I weigh, then the value or you can say mass is equivalent to molecular weight in grams. Suppose I will take 6.023 into 10 to 23 molecules of carbon. And if I weigh those number of molecules, the value will be 12 grams because the molecular weight of the carbon is 12. Same way if I take one mole, that is 6.023 into 10 to 23 O2, oxygen, and if I weigh, then the value will be molecular weight of oxygen in grams that is 32, gra 32 grams. Same way if I take 1 kilomole of any gas that is 6.023 into 10 to 26 molecules and if I weigh let us say sulphur then the answer on the weighing machine scale will be the molecular weight of the sulphur and that is in kg. The sulfur molecular weight is 32. So basically, it is known as molar mass, which is denoted by m. So, mole and kilomole is some numbers, but for any chemical reactions, for example, when carbon oxidizes and produces CO2. The number of moles of the carbon as well as number of moles of O2 are supposed to be the same. Then and then same number of the molecule, uh, uh, moles or molecules will be of CO2. So, 1 kilomole carbon requires 1 kilomole oxygen O2 to produce 1 kilomole CO2. That is the meaning. That means 6.023 into 10 raised to 26 molecules of carbon require 6.023 into 10 raised to 26 molecules of O2 to produce 6.023 into 10 raised to 26 molecules of CO2. So that means 1 kilomole of carbon means it is a 12 kg. 12 kg carbons requires 32 kg O2 or oxygen to produce 44 kg CO2, that is the mean. So to clear the exam, you have to remember some molecular weight of some components like carbon, molecular weight is 12, that means if molar mass is 12 kg per kilomole. So if I take 1 kilomole carbon molecules, it will, the answer will be 12 kg or it, its mass will be 12 kg. H2, 2 kg per kilomole, N2, 14 into 2, that is 28 kg per mole, kg per kilomole, O2, that is 16 into 2, 32 kg per kilomole, sulfur, 32 kg per kilomole, and then CO2 is carbon 12 plus O2, 32, so 44, CO is 12 plus 16, that is 28. SO2 is 32 plus 32, so 64, H2O that is 2 plus 16, so 18. So remember this molecular weight as far as this exam is concerned. It is important to be remembered, at least first 5, then it is a summation. Now let us understand the relationship between mass and number of moles. <coughs> In 56 kg nitrogen, how many molecules are there? 
So we know one kilomole of nitrogen, if I weigh, it is 28 kg. So 56 divided by 28 is 2 kilomole nitrogen. Therefore, mass upon molar mass is equals to number of moles, number of kilomoles basically. If mass in kg and molar mass is kg per kilomole. Same way there is a relations between universal gas constant and specific gas constants. The first equation is PV is equal to MRST. Same I can write down PV is equal to NRUT also. And then this N which is the number of moles can be replaced by mass upon molar mass. So the new equation will be mass upon molar mass universal gas constant Ru into T. So if I remove, if I equate both the equations, the mass is removed, temperature is removed. So specific gas constant Rs is equal to universal gas constant by molar mass. So we can write the ideal gas equations which was PV is equal to NRUT, we can write PV is equal to MRUTM. Uh, ideal gas equations MRST can be write down by MRUT by M. So we can calculate the RS of any gas once the molecular weight or the molar mass of that gas is known. For example, Rs of O2 that is oxygen is equal to 8.3143 divided by 32 that is 0.26 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Same way Rs specific gas con constant for CO2 is equal to 8.3143 divided by 44 that is 0.189 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Now you can see here there is a O2 and CO2 both are ideal gas. It's a, but when there is a mixture like air, we cannot calculate RS like that. In that we can, we, we, we can use the ideal gas equations because we know the density at NTP conditions of air is 1.293 kg per nm cube. So the reciprocal of that density is a specific volume which is equal to 1 upon 1.293 is equal to 0.7734 nm cube per kg. Now when we are saying NTP it means pressure is 101.3 kilopascal and when we say temperature 0 degree Celsius means it is 273 Kelvin that is the NTP mean. So if I use the equations PV is equal to MRST, RS will be PV upon MT. P is 101.3 kilopascal. Volumes that is per kg, it is 0 0.7734 and mass is 1 because we are talking about specific volume V by M and uh, temperature is 273 Kelvin. So the RS for such, RS for air is 0.287 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Same way by equating this, we can calculate the RS for different gaseous mixture provided we know the density or specific volume and pressure and temperature. Now let us Calculate some example. A steel cylinder of 77 liters of capacity contains CO2 at 27 degrees Celsius and pressure of 110 eta. Calculate the mass of gas contained in the steel cylinder. So, to find out the mass of mass of gas for CO2. We know equations PV is equal to MRST. P is the pressure supposed to be in kilopascal, absolute. 
here pressure is given in eta so we have to convert that eta to kilopascal v is the volume that is 77 liters means 77 divided by 1000 meter cube that is 0 0.077 Then CO2, so molar mass of CO2 is equal to 12 plus 32 40, is equal to 44. T is the temperature 27 degree Celsius that is equivalent to 300 Kelvin. Pressure is 110 eta convert to kilopascal. So 1 eta is kg per cm square. So 110 kg per cm square absolute. Here you cannot assume that given pressure is absolute it is already given it is absolute there is no no need to go for the assumptions so 110 kg per cm square into 0.981 is a bar now convert that bar to kilopascal multiply by 100 so 10791 kilopascal so rs is equal to rs for co2 is equal to 8.3143 divided by 44 so 0 0.189 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Now if you put the equations M is equal to PV is equal to MRST. So M is equal to PV upon RST. And if you write down the numbers and solve the equations, let's say pressure is 10791 kilopascal, volume 0 0.077 meter cube divided by RS 0 0.189, further divided by temperature 300 Kelvin. You will get mass is equals to 14.65 kg. Let us understand one more. The pressure of a gas supplied to an engine is measured as 100 mm of water gauge when barometer reads 756 mm of mercury. Determine the volume of 1.5 kg of this gas if its temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. The gas constant of the gas is 0.686 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So PV is equal to MRST. So first mass is given 1.5 kg. Temperature is given 85 degrees Celsius convert to Kelvin that is 358. Now pressure gauge reading is given that is 100 mm of water column. So if I divide it by 13.6, I will get 7.35 mm of Hg because the barometer pressure is in mm of Hg. So that's why I have converted. So barometer is 756. Barometer means it's atmospheric pressures of that locations. So the absolute pressure will be summation of these two. That is 756 plus 7.35 will be the mm of Hg. divided by 750 if you remember during our earlier tutorial we derive the one bar is equals to 750 mm of hg so if i divide by 750 i will get the bar and from bar multiply by 100 will give you kilopascal that is 101.78 kilopascal RS is 0.687 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and I use the equations to find out the volume V is equal to MRST divided by pressure. Mass is given, RS is known, temperature is known divided by absolute pressures in kilopascal 101.78 equivalents to 3.62 meter cube. So such numericals can come in paper number one using this ideal gas equations or characteristic gas equations. Now let's understand one more important fundamental Avogadro's gas principle. Ideal gas laws PV is equal to NRUT. Now let us assume two different gases, nitrogen and CO2, mostly in flue gas after the combustions. And let's say they are on the same pressure and temperatures P and T. For nitrogen, there is a small N1 kilomole 
having a volume of V1. And for CO2, there is a N2 kilomoles that occupies volume V2. So if I put the ideal equation for these two different gas, I can write P V1 is equal to N1 RUT for N2 and for CO2 P V2 is equal to N2 RUT. So by dividing 1 divided by 2, pressure is gone, we will say V1 upon V2 is equals to N1 upon N2. That means volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. So if any gas mixtures, if number of moles are same, then the volume occupied by both the gas are same. It's a 50%, 50%. This is very important for combustion calculations. That's flue gas, when we want to find out the flue gas components. But the condition is that pressure and temperatures are supposed to be remains constants for both the, uh, you can say, gas. It is also known as Avogadro's gas principle, which states that under the same condition of temperature and pressures, equal volume of all the gases contains the same number of molecules. Let's understand. Suppose there is a NTP conditions. There are three different gas hydrogen, nitrogen and CO2. Let's say I have a 1 kilo mole of hydrogen at NTP conditions, so pressure is 1 atmosphere and temperature is 273 Kelvin. So if I put PV is equal to NRUT, then I will find out volume of 1 kilo mole hydrogen will occupy 22.4 meter cube. So volume is equal to N R U T by P. N is 1 kilo mole. R U is 8.3143. T is a 0 degree Celsius. That is 273. And pressure is 101.3 kilopascal. Then its answer will be 22.4 meter cube. Now this is true for all the gases. It means any ga any ideal gas at NTP conditions will occupy 22.4 meter cube volume. So if that gas is hydrogen and the number of moles is 1 kilo mole, then the mass of that 1 kilo mole will be 2 kg. Same way, nitrogen 1 kilo mole will occupy 22.4 because irrespective of any gas, all the ideal gas at NTP conditions will occupy 22.4 meter cube volume. So 1 kilo mole, if that gas is nitrogen, then the molecular weight or mass of that N2 will be 28 kg. Same way for CO2, it is 44 kg. Same way for SO2, sulfur 32 plus O2 32, 64 kg. So that means density, which is kg per meter cube, density of any gas, any ideal gas at NTP conditions is kg. So kg is nothing but molecular weight. Molecular weight divided by 22.4, but the unit will be kg per nm cube. This is very, very important. This formula you are going to use many times during the combustion calculations. Density of any gas at NTP conditions is nothing but molecular weight divided by 22.4. So density of hydrogen H2 at NTP condition is 2 divided by 22.4. N2 28 divided by 22.4. CO2 44 divided by 22.4 kg per nm cube. Let's understand with this numerical. 
cylinder having a volume of 0 0.075 meter cube contains nitrogen at 7 bar pressure at 30 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of nitrogen in the cylinder? First, let's calculate volume at NTP in Nm cube. So, let us equate the conditions. One condition is 7 bar 30 degree Celsius having 0 0.075 meter cube and second is the NTP condition. So, let us find out the volume at NTP. We know pressure at NTP is 101.3 kilo Pascal and uh, or you can say 1.013 bar. If here there is a bar, we can go for bar 2 and the temperature is 30, 0 degree Celsius at NTP. So, 273 Kelvin. So, let us assume the given pressure is absolute. P1 is 7 bar volume is 0 0.075, temperature is 273 plus 30 that is 303 Kelvin is equal to P2 atmospheric conditions in bar is 1.013 into V2 divided by 273. So, the V2 will be equals to 0 0.467 Nm cube. Now, we know that mass of any gas uh, 1 kilo mole nitrogen will occupy 22.4 Nm cube and the mass of that 1 kilo mole nitrogen will be molecular weight that is 28 kg or I will say density of nitrogen at NTP condition is 28 divided by 22.4 or third way if the volume is 22.4 Nm cube, then the mass is 28 kg. So, if the volume is 0.467 Nm cube of nitrogen, then the mass will be 0.467 into 28 divided by 22.4. That's nothing but density, which is equal to 0.584 kg. That's how we can find out with the help of Avogadro's principle. Obviously, you can find out the same answers from ideal gas equations too. M is equals to PV upon RST, pressure is 7 bar, absolute, convert to kilopascal, so multiply by 100, volume is 0 0.075 meter cube, RS is 8.3143 kilo joule per kg Kelvin, kilo mole Kelvin. Multiply by 303, uh, RS is RU divided by mass. So, 8.3143 divided by molar mass that is 28 multiplied by temperature 303 and if you solve these equations, the answer is 0.584 kg. Now, let us quickly see one MCQ. So, number of moles of water contained in 54 kg of water is, we know molar weight or molar mass is water is H2 plus O that is 18. So, 54 divided by 18 is 3. So, that is about gas loads as far as BE exam is concerned. Hope your gas loads are clear. Thank you very much. Once again, I am Bhavesh Patel from Vithalam Consultant. You can reach me out at vithalam at the red gmail.com. Thank you.